Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, solo tabletop gamer. This is another episode of Tabletop Talk. But before we start this video, if you like my video, please click the like button. If you have not subscribed, please click that subscribe button, the little bell icon, and every time I upload a video, you will hear about it. So, let's get into Tabletop Talk, and I want to talk about dice. And I want to talk about some different systems out there. Maybe, and I think one thing with this video, a lot of people run into, particularly that play a lot of the D20 system. And it's something very simple, something that I use, a little secret I'm going to share with you guys, what I use with my solo RPG. And I think it may help answer a lot of questions out there. So before I get into the meat and potatoes of this thing, I am going to, at that point, give a shout out to Miguel Saguirio. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, if I slaughtered it, I am so sorry. His question here, which is a really good question, is, Dear Artichoke, I've been thinking about an issue since I viewed your great tutorial video. For example, let's assume that a group of heroes goes in the path into the forest during the night and they want to know if up ahead of them on the path is safe or not. As a solo player you go with the RPG rule set or I'm sorry skill that you're running with for instance or which I go back to the mythic system to get that answer with the fate chart. How do you manage that kind of situation? If you have the time to clarify this to me, I would be very happy. Thanks in advance. And that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to talk about some dice and easy ways that I clarify things. And um, so before we really, really get to the meat and potatoes, let's look at the dice. And I know for a lot of you guys out there, you're going to be like, well, I'm Artichoke. I know what the dice are. I own a lot of dice. And I'm sure you do. And I'm not going to argue that point at all. And for me, as playing a lot of D20 systems and then getting into percentile systems really changed my perspective. And it really changed my perspective, particularly being a solo gamer. It's something I've been looking at really through how can I put this a difficult way more difficult than what it really is and it could have been a lot easier and streamlined had I honestly thought about it so <clears throat> we get our polyhedral dice set and I'm going to use the example for you guys out there that love D&D or the old school revivals, the basic fantasies and the white boxes and all these other game systems that are out there. So you're used to using your 20-sider a lot. You probably use this six-sider quite a bit. That 12-sider for you barbarians out there that have that two-handed great axe that at that point you're kicking in the door, slaughtering all the goblins and stealing their uh, life savings. I know that comes in handy for you. The 8-sider. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably use the 8-sider. And who cannot forget the 4-sider. can never forget the 4-sider. And then the 10-sider. But then there's that one die that seems to never get used very often. Particularly with D20 systems. And that is the percentage die. And it's a funny thing. It comes with every single polyhedral set now. Now the original sets, you never got a actual percentage die. You just had six dice. The seventh dice is actually something that's new since third edition of D&D &D came rolling around. And here's the thing, particularly with D20 systems. Most of the time this little guy right here is really for the dungeon master. Very seldomly is the player going to actually use this. 
Now, some of you may be saying, no, 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 you're wrong. I don't think I am. And if you, if you think about when you play, and if you were to take the mythic system out of the equation, or anything else that you were using, and you were just strictly a player, at that point, you would be using your 20-sider, and then whatever dice you're going to use for the damage of your weapon, or spell. And that would be, well, about it. Unless at that point, the Dungeon Master would ask you to do a percentage roll. So, as solo enthusiasts, we do have a tendency to use these percentile, particularly with these systems right here, right? The Mythic system, whether you're just using the Game Master emulator on its own, or you're using the whole entire role-playing game, which is an entire role-playing game, plus a, you know, a Game Master emulator, all in one book, and all of the gamers lived happily ever after. Right. So, I had noticed, um, and there's a reason why I don't really bring up Mythic anymore in my videos. It's because I don't really use it much anymore. And one of the game systems that really, really helped me when I sat back and I'm playing it, and I said, man, I'm really doing this the hard way. And that first one is Palladium Fantasy. Awesome game. Awesome game. The cool thing is the game system runs a 20-sided mechanic along with a percentage mechanic next to one another through the game system. Works very well. Percentage is used for your skills. D20 is used for combat. Now, another game you guys heard me spot off about, Ruin Quest. Love it. Love that game. And then again, we're getting back to the percentile. So, the question that I was asked about the path in the woods with the adventures. Would you use your skill set for currently that game system you're playing? Or would you go to the fate chart? Well, it would depend on the system. I mean, if I'm using Palladium, I'm going right to these, right here. Why? Because that's going to give me, at that point, a really good percentage. And what I mean by percentage is it's going to break it down into a percentage. And I, there's really no other way I can really get that out there other than a percentage. In, in the gaming world, the percentage is really, truly a magical thing. And I'm going to share a little secret with you guys how I do my solo RPG. I don't really use Mythic anymore. And it runs so, so much easier. And that is using my percentile dice. Asking the question, well, is there somebody up ahead on that path? Well, I could always go to the Mythic and at that point, go through all them steps with that fate chart to come up with a number and then roll. <laughs> oh, wow. So the percentile dice just went into the coffee. <laughs> so, um, at that point, I would roll my percentage die. The higher the percentage, the higher the probability that there's probably danger up ahead of me. 77%. Now, the thing about this, which makes it so simple, so easy, and it runs very, very 
smooth throughout your game, particularly as solo play, is that it's very simple to either create your own table or at that point be able to add modifiers or penalties to your role based on the situation. Now, let's just say with his question, what he's asking about his characters, what if all his characters were human? And none of them possessed at that point dark vision. Well, at that point, I would have to say they would get a 15% penalty because they're in the forest, it's at night, and they're going to have, at that point, a hard time perceiving what's up ahead of them because they do not have that vision. So at that point, I said 15%, and I rolled a 31. Well, right there, that's a very, very low amount at that point. Now, you may be asking, well, does that answer the question? Is there something up ahead of me to worry about? Absolutely there was, because my first roll at that point was a 70%, which was, yes, there's a high probability that there's danger up there. But the fact that they were human, there was a 15% penalty, because at that point they can't see in the dark that well. And they only rolled a 31. So at that point, their chance of being able to perceive the danger up ahead of them very low and it's probably going to leave them in a very bad situation I really want to sip that coffee really bad but I just oh man I mean they're dice you know they roll on the table they fall on the floor you pick them up you put them back on the table and you roll them and you just think about all the stuff that they oh oh man anyways moving on so I, you know, that's the way that I do it, guys, and I find that it works, for me personally, smooth, way smooth. And some of the game systems out there that will help you with this, and if you're into a D20 system to where you're locked into that, constantly relying on this 20-sider, and that's it, try some other game systems out there to see if they will help improve this with you, particularly with the percentile systems. Because once you, at that point, adopt that into your game, and it becomes very, how can I put it, second nature to your game, your, your game at that point will run much smoother. And now, what you have done is created your own system to answer your own questions and you have avoided all those steps of this. And me personally, it's the way that I really, really enjoy to do it. I really love just using the percentile system. It works excellent. Um, a really good example that I can give you from both the standpoint of view of Palladium and Ruin Quest is the with your skills, how your character reacts to the environment around them. And then at that point, penalties or bonuses that are added in for their success and or failure. And it's more more dramatic, I guess, is the point that I'm looking at. If you're looking at it as a role-playing angle, not, you know, rolling the dice, but role-playing through your character's eyes at that point, it is more dramatic. It adds more to that game, and it eliminates all that steps of going through the mythic system to generate that number. Now this is for me. Some of you out there may enjoy the mythic system and you know incorporate it into your games, have a lot of fun with it, and keep using it. And if you do, that is awesome. I know I did for quite a while. And but it's just one of those things playing Palladium, playing RuneQuest, 
even Rollmaster or Harp, the way that their systems work with the percentile systems really changed my perspective on, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Why do I need this chart to give me a percentage number? When I have dice, I it's my game, I know what's going on. And at that point, using a little bit of logic, as just like what Mythic says, I can add in my own penalties of bonuses and then roll the die. Now, I'm not saying to just completely abandon Mythic altogether. There's a lot of good aspects to it. Um, the fact that they went through all the steps to, at that point, be able to have a quick index to go in there in any game system you're playing and be able to cross it over into their game. One game that comes you know, to mind right away that I think this system would work really well with would be Worlds of Darkness, of the point-based system. I think would work extremely well with it. Now, but me, I have found the good old-fashioned percentile dice here do the trick every single time. And I dare you guys to try it for yourselves to see how quickly your games move, how fluently they move. It gets me back to this other comment that I had from James Lemon that says, I'm confused. I thought the cross-reference, the acting rank, with the difficulty rank to get your percentage chance of success. That's how they do it in the book, in the examples. And then Zane757 put the comment, and if you look at it, there's like six steps. Six steps to go through to give you that percentage number to ultimately roll your percentage die. So this is your game. This is your solo RPG. It's your world, your characters, everything you created. I surely think at that point, you could think of your own, at that point, penalties and bonuses to add to the percentile dice. And utilize them more into your game, even if you're playing basic fantasy, to at that point, be able to answer those questions to bring more into your game to make it quicker quicker at that point transition and I think you're gonna find your games at that point will be more enjoyable because you're taking all those steps out of it unless you enjoy that maybe some of you really, really enjoy that, and that's cool. It's solo RPG. It's your thing. You do what you want with it. I know I do what I want with my solo RPGs, but I was just looking at that comment, and I was trying to think of how do I follow up this comment, and then I had another one. And looking at it, I figured it was time to explain to you guys how I do my solo RPG. How I have been where you've been at before with Mythic. In some of those questions where even they see in there, okay, well, you got to use logic and you got to think, you know, in that situation and maybe change a few things to make it work and make sense of everything. So. If you're going to do that, me personally, then I would rather make my own tables to detail to the gaming that I enjoy and at that point make everything that makes sense to me and avoid all of these steps to get to that same, at that point, question. And I have had great success with this. Great success. And... I dare you guys to give it a shot. Give it a shot. See how it works out for you. Your next game session, instead of going to the Mythic book, just use your percentile. When you get to that door, is the door locked? 76%. It is locked. Is it a difficult lock? Well, at that point, 
Is your character a thief? Is your character whatever he is? Does he have something that will give him an advantage? Well, my character's a thief and he has a master lockpick set. Okay. Well, I know, I know it's locked. Well, with that, let me see. He's, he'll get a, we'll say 15% bonus because of that. Now, I'm going to say there's a 50-50 chance that he may unlock that lock. Let's roll. I rolled a 64%. You minus the 15. Boom, I'm there. He unlocked it. He got past it. So on and so forth. Is that door trapped? 78%. It's a high probability. Yes, I would have to say there is a trap. And I find it just works just way smoother. Now, I dare you guys. I double dog dare you guys to give it a shot. And see what you think. And I'm mean, just looking at it this way. If it doesn't work for you and there's a system that works better for you, stick with it. But if this is easier than what you've been doing before, and you're like, hey, wait a minute. Okay, well, you know, let me see. I walk into this, my characters walk into this room. Hmm, well, is there an encounter in there? 58%. Mm -hmm. It is above 50%. There is a small chance that there could be something in there. I think by using that system, like I said, I dare you guys, just give it a shot and see how it works out for you. I have adopted this and used this system for quite a while. And when I got the Mythic book, I had my own chart I made on graph paper and they were just yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And I had them at that point, I had a column from 1 to 20 and then running this way, I had a column running from in the percentage 10, 20, 30, 40, blah, 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 and ran that down. And then at that point, I would roll a percentage die, and I would roll the 20 cider, and I would cross them and look for, is it yes, is it no? And that's how I did that. Then I came to the mythic system, and I'm like, oh, hey, you know, this is a more of a structured system. And I used that for a while, but just like as I'm looking at these questions, sometimes it leaves you with more questions and more confusion, and the simpler way is, just go straight to the percentile dice. It's all about gaming. It's the game. And it's very, very simple. Particularly when you use a system like this. And one of the confusing things is, is this is trying to, at that point, show you a way to have your own oracle or emulator plus it's trying to give you an example of a role-playing game at the same time and that can get very confusing it's just like the first time if you ever any of you guys out there that have played role master the first time you read through the role master book you are going to be confused you are going to be so confused, you are not going to know where to start. Because it lays out the book in, here's the basic game. Here's the basic rules. Here's the advanced rules. Here are the optional rules. Now, if you're rolling a character and you're using the basic rules, you're going to use this, 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 and this. But if you're using the advanced rules, you're going to use this, 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 and this. Now, if you're using... The optional rules, you're going to use this, this, but not that, but add this, put this, and this, and that. So, you're like, but, you know. but after you read it a few times, you're able to discern that and say, aha, okay, I know what you're talking about here. Now I, I understand what you're talking about. So, at times, the mythic system can leave you like that. I completely get it. 
And for those of you out there struggling with that mythic system, trying to make the mythic system work, trying to make heads and tails of it, just go straight to the percentile dice. What is the probability? It doesn't have to be about success or failure. <clears throat> what is the probability that there is danger up ahead on that path in the woods at night? 11%. Not that good of a probability. It looks like those particular characters this time made it through unscathed. So I hope this helps in some of the confusion out there. Um, and I know it's sometimes some of the material out there that looks like it's too good to be true maybe that's because it is and I'm not knocking mythic whatsoever um, absolutely not it's a because it, I've used it <coughs> it's worked well for me I know it's worked well for a lot of you guys out there and but it gets to a point to where at that point you want something a little more streamlined you want something simple and the best way I can explain this is if you have ever and I'm speaking from a mechanic perspective here so if you have ever taken any type of training one thing that they will explain to you in the class is remember this kiss keep it simple stupid and it's really good advice because sometimes when we overthink things we can make things more complicated than what they really are and sometimes we're looking so hard at something that we just don't realize that the answer that we are truly looking for is literally staring us right in the face but we just don't see it and it's the best way I can explain that to you guys it's the best way I have found for emulation um, you know it's one of the reasons in my videos I'm always stressing to you guys to create your own tables create detail it for your game um, use this as a stepping stone to make it for yourself detail it to your gaming tweak it alter it get all the kinks worked out until it's flawless and that's what it's about the thing with the fate chart and mythic is they have already done that for their RPG system so when you use other RPG systems with it at that point it's gonna leave some unanswered questions and it some things may not make sense which gets back to as they're explaining in there sometimes you got to use logic and make a decision as to whether to reroll or pick something else to fit the story narrative so Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it real simple. And I think you're going to find your games will be a lot better. I hope this helps, guys. Um, I always love doing my videos with a cup of coffee and being able to stare at my coffee and drink my coffee. And this coffee cup has gone cold. And I think I'm going to end the video here because I have to, at this point, go and pour this cup of coffee out to retrieve my percentile die. Alright, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click the bell icon and you will be notified every time I upload a video. And I think this is going to end this uh, tabletop talk. Man, that was such a good cup of coffee, too. All right, guys, until next time.
talk to you later.